Greetings students. As I was working on the farming problem, I realized that I wanted to be able to manipulate piecewise defined functions. Um, Desmos is so handy for playing around with different models um, that I wanted to show you how to create piecewise defined functions in Desmos. So let's make uh, a function a, which I will have be the absolute value function, but I think I want to shift it over a little bit and maybe flip it upside down and let's shift it up by two. So now I've got this sort of pyramid function. All right, I want to create a piecewise defined function that is zero when x is smaller than two, uh, is this a value when x is between two and four, and then is zero again when x is larger than six. So let me show you how to do it. I'll call this function b. You want to use the curly braces, and now you're going to define each piece of your piecewise defined function separately. First, you specify the domain of the first piece of your function. So I'm going to look at x less than two. Um, it's just filled in x less than 2 is equal to 1 here, just to sort of show me what domain I'm looking at. But I can have a colon, and then I can tell it what I really want it to be. So if I say 0, it displays as 0. 3 displays as 3. If I make it x, it's showing me the function y equals x in that domain. I could also make it be the value a. And you see it's displaying here in red. I could also make it a plus 2. So you can have whatever function you want here, and this is telling you the y value when x is less than 2. All right, well, I want my y value to be 0 there. Now, the way you define the second piece is you have a comma and then the same pattern, where you give it the domain and then a colon and then the function. So my domain for the middle section is going to be uh, 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. Oops, less than or equal to 6. And I'm going to have a colon. And for this portion, I want the a function. And you see it's replicated uh, just this little top of the pyramid. Now I'll specify the third part of my piecewise defined function. Uh, this is going to be in the domain x is larger than 6. I will use a colon to tell it what I want the y value to be. And when I type 0, now if I hide my original function, you see I've got uh, my piecewise defined function is defined for all real numbers. And it's zero everywhere except for this little portion of the hat. Um, if I wanted to, I can now make a new function c, which is equal to, say, b plus 2 or b plus 1. So that's kind of cool. I could also have it be 2 times b plus 1. So you can, you can transform your piecewise defined functions however you want, which is extremely convenient. Let me show you how to do another thing. So let's make a new function, which I will call c. And I'm going to make it 2 times the square root of x minus 5. x minus, yeah, x minus 5. All right, what if I want to make a function that is the sum of b and c? So if I just say d equals b plus c, you see it in purple here. Um, and it seems to be working great as long as x is larger than 5. Uh, it's following my square root function perfectly. When the hat function is 0, uh, it seems to be adding the values in this region. But if you notice, if I hide these, uh, this d function is not defined for x less than 5. But the problem is I want it to be defined everywhere. So the problem is that uh, the c function's domain is only x greater than or equal to 5. And so the domain of my function is also restricted to be x greater than or equal to 5. So what I really need to do is the same thing I did for the hat function. I need to make a piecewise defined function for c that will extend the domain to be all real numbers. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the curly braces, and I'm going to say when x is less than or when x is greater than or equal to 5, colon, I want it to be my square root function. And then I'll have a comma, and I'll say when x is less than 5, I want it to have the value of 0. So you see I've created a piecewise defined function version of my square root function that's now defined for all real numbers. And so now I can have my purple function be the sum of both those functions. And you see that it's defined for all real numbers. And I've got this nice hat and then hat plus the rest of my square root. So that's like kind of a cool looking function. And then of course, if you want to, you can define transformations on that guy. So e is going to be, oh, it doesn't like that. Wait, e is already defined. What's happening?
Oh, e is already defined because e is a number. All right, so here's my f function. So you can kind of do whatever you want. It's it's really a lot of fun to play around. Let's make it a reflected. Oh yeah. So I'm sure you can make some awesome pictures with this. <clears throat> All right. Oh, by the way, you can also do derivatives here. So y equals d dx of d. Whoa, and now you can see the derivative of my piecewise defined function. That is so cool. That's just about the coolest thing I've ever seen. All right, you've seen enough. Um, feel free to use these tools on your own to explore the modeling problem that I've given you.